Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you some updates to Google Classroom. Uh, the first thing we're going to go over is grading periods, which you can now set in um, Google Classroom. Teachers have been asking for this one. Um, but I think the best one is you can close submissions after the due date now. So we won't, you don't have to have <laughs> kids turning in stuff at the end of the year that was due the first week of school. And then I'm going to review practice sets. I'm going to show you practice sets, but then in, in the notes for the video below, you will be able to uh, see a link to two videos. I went into great depth on practice sets and I posted that video last year in May. Um, so I'll give you the, the link to that below. All right. So first thing, let's get to Google Classroom. We can always do classroom.google.com or you can get to Google Classroom by going to the Waffle, the Google Apps Launcher, and it's there, right? Um, Google Classroom is right there. Remember, you can organize your, um, your Waffle, so you can move them around um, and customize them. Okay, go back to Google Classroom. Right off the bat, you're gonna see it looks a little different so just the layout of it is um, a little different. We have this sticking out right here, which before we had to click on the hamburger menu to see it. You can collapse that and then you just see the icons. And when you hover over them, it pops out. And then these are the classes. Now remember in Google Classroom, you can move these around. So, and that's something great to show your students too, so they can organize them by first period, second period, third period, fourth period, so on. Um, I'm gonna go into my sample class here. All right, so if I go over here to the classroom settings, so it's that gear icon, and I scroll down, do, 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 do. while we're here, let's make sure on the stream, that you have it set to only teachers can post or comment. The default is students can post and comment, which means on that stream, that, that um, the landing page for Google Classroom, that means students can put anything on there. I have mine set so that only I can post or comment. And then the next one, just to clean up that stream, hide your notifications because um, the default is show condensed notifications, just hide them. It makes the stream uh, much cleaner. And we shouldn't be posting assignments on, this, on, the, on the stream, you should be posting assignments in the classwork page. All right, down here you can see it's brand new. And um, so grading periods. To find the grading periods, um, for the district, you can go up here to the WLS bo uh, bookmarks and then go to the staff hub. I always double or two finger tap or right click to open in a new tab. Otherwise it'll open up over what, you know, it'll, this, this page will go bye bye. Um, so over here I can go to calendar, click on that. And then this does have the grading periods here. So first quarter, second quarter, third quarter. So go, go back here. Now you can see I've already put some in because I was playing around. You can delete these at any point. So I've got first quarter, second quarter, third quarter. I'm going to show you how to, how to add. So you just add a grading period and then I'm going to call it fourth quarter. The start date of fourth quarter is when you click on this little, um, calendar. I find it easier to just do this and just find March and the year 2024 and then click on that. So March 11th is the beginning of fourth quarter and then you click OK. And then you're going to enter an ending date, which would be May 2024. And that is May 28th. Pretty crazy. All right. So I've got all of this. Now, the beautiful thing is you can apply to existing assignments. So I'm going to turn that on and you can copy this to all of your other classrooms. So all of your other Google classrooms. So this is nice. You just click on select classes. So I just want it to go to awesome classroom 
click select and now it is um, on there so that is an update you always have to save you always have to save and then if i go into awesome classroom and go to my settings if i scroll down my uh, grading periods are already there so i don't have to retype all that in so that's the first one yay here we go yay so that's the first one the next thing oh the next thing i wanted to go over is you can now close submission after the due date so when you are posting an assignment in the classwork page so i'm going to go back to my um, sample class and i'm going to go to classwork i'm going to create a new assignment this looks pretty familiar so you put a title to your assignment so test assignment the more instructions you give your students the better of course um, and then i could go up here i could i could um, put it in awesome classroom and the thing is it's always important to have a due date so i'm going to put a due date of the 25th you don't really need a time i'm going to put it under my assignments now look it automatically grabbed first quarter because the due date it falls within the first quarter um, time frame that we put in now if i change this uh, let's put it um, let's say this is a really long project it's not due till january 9th when i change that notice third quarter then changes so it's based on the due date now let's say I don't use a due date, which I strongly encourage you to use um, due dates. Then um, you would need to manually put in what grading period you want. So put in due dates and then it will automatically grab the correct um, quarter. So that's what it looks like on that end. All right, while we're in here, I want to show you that you can close submissions after due date. So right here, it says close submission after due date. If you click that, students will not be able to submit the assignment after August 24th. So it locks your assignments because in the past, students could turn it in any time, you know, past the due date. And that was very frustrating um, to teachers because you want to get your grades all set up. Now notice it's you have to select that. So if you don't select it and you're fine with students, you know, submitting um, assignments late, that's fine. You can go, you do not have to um, close the submission. But if you have a hard deadline and an assignment and you don't want students turn it in afterwards, then you can just click that and they will not be able to submit that assignment after the due date. All right, so we did grading periods, closing submission. So one more thing before I um, get out of this assignment page, I wanted to remind you that you can schedule an assignment to multiple classes. So I have two classes selected for this test assignment. If I go up here to assign, this drop down menu gives me other options. So I can schedule this assignment and notice I've got sample class, which is this class that I'm in right now, and then awesome classroom. So publish date, that's when it goes live, okay? So it's when do you want the students to see it? So I don't want the students to see this assignment until Monday. And I can pick the time. So 8 a.m., this is my first period class, so I'm cool with that. Set the due date right here, August 24th put the topic, where do I want it? And then the grading period, it's first quarter. Now with Awesome Classroom, that's my third period class. So I want that to go out Monday, but not, I don't want the kids to see it until 10 a.m. So I'm gonna set that to 10 a.m. Um, the due date is the same. 
oh wait the due date is the 20th yes friday the 25th i'm gonna go up there and change that to friday and no topic i'm gonna put this under assignment examples and this is first quarter also it grabs first quarter now notice right here you have the option to close submission after due date i'm going to select that for that class too because i want it just closed and then i can schedule so the students will not see it so um, if i scroll down to my assignment examples it's gray so i know that it hasn't posted for the students and I can see right here that it is scheduled for August 21st at 8 a.m. And if I go into my other assignment or my other classroom, I will see, where is it? Oh, there it is. Test assignment scheduled for August 21st. So that's an older update. You guys probably already know about it, but I did want to touch on that. So the last thing I want to talk about is practice sets. Down below the video and the YouTube um, video is a description of um, this video. <laughs> and I will put links to the other practice sets video that I, that I made last year. I made some in May. So right here, practice sets, you can see it says new. When you click on it, you have here are i have a practice set in geology three digit addition multi-step equation um, genetic engineering and decimals and fractions well let me back up for a second let me explain what practice sets are so practice sets are a relatively new feature like i said they came out in may um, that allows teachers to create interactive assignments with auto grading and remember they are practice sets practice is the key word here it's not an assessment it's um it's practice so um they can be used to assess students understanding of a variety of topics i'm going to do an example in math but they can also be in science language arts and social studies you assign them just like any other google assignment and when students complete a practice sets their answers are automatically graded and then teachers can view the students' answers and provide feedback. But practice sets also provide teachers with performance insights, such as which, student, which students are struggling and which students are not getting out of the park. If a student gets a question wrong, the built-in artificial intelligence that, that Google has will um, show either a video or some some hint for the student to uh, relearn the concept and then be able to answer the question again so like i said this is practice this is not a test so we want them to get the the uh, information they need to master the skill so let's create one real quick so my i'm going to call this um fractions so I can go in and type questions, but I can also import a PDF. So I'm gonna click import. So you can also upload it from your um, computer. But I see mine right here, so I'm gonna double click on that. And notice it's giving me a little prompt, select each problem that you want to import. So I'm going to just cut this guy. It's not gonna be perfect, let me see. There we go. So I've got him. I've got this one. I can import those questions. I got to delete that one because it shows the answer. <laughs> Duh. Okay. All right. So here are the ones that don't have the answer. Uh, let me double check that they don't have answers. Okay, good. So now I'm going to um, enter the correct answer. So this correct answer is two and now this is the important part is you have to select the skill so the skill that it suggested was not what i wanted so what i did is i just typed in fraction and then i chose understand a fraction in terms of unit fractions and then um, this little down arrow because i wanted to make sure that i got the right skill 
is right here, parts of a whole, and then it gives one six, one six, one six, one six. So it, it explains um, that. So this one, nine. So this one, once again, I want to do understanding fractions. So sometimes it takes a while to find the skill, which is a little um, annoying. There we go. And then the explainer, once again, is the same one. Now I can add my own resource. This is a new feature. Um, so I can go into YouTube and look for um, elementary fractions practice. So here's fractions for kids. Learn fractions in seven minutes. So I just want, this one looks good. Let's understand fractions. So I'm going to select that video and um, I'm going to add it. So you can add your own resources. You could also add your own hint. So you can actually type in what you want the hint to be if a student misses the, the question. So this is new. This is new. Um, all right, so I got a couple of those set. Now the beauty of the practice sets is you can um, try it as a student because we always want to see what it looks like for the student. So I'm going to click try as a student. Oh, it's telling me, okay, so I'm not completely done. So I'm going to continue anyway. Welcome to practice sets. So this is what the students see. So this walks them through a short tutorial of how to use it. And so I'm going to just go in. So I'm looking at question number one. I'm going to dismiss this because I want you to see this extra help. So right here, I have to go in and um, put an answer. So I'm going to put my answer right there. I could, you could also have your students show their work. So if you want them to, um, you know, actually write it out how they do it, they can do that. And then they could actually just put the number two, see how it recognizes it. And then I can click check. And I get that little check mark that tells me that it's correct. So now let's go down here. And how about if I just, um, I'm just going to put um, one and I'm going to do check. So right now it's saying try again, but then this little light bulb is going off. So I can show a hint and right here. So then it shows this little video, which is fun. And then I would be like, oh, all right, so that's nine. And then I check it. And, oh, and then it brings up a cute little thing when you get it right. So that is practice sets. If you are intrigued by this, watch one of the videos under the, um, the description of this video, because I did one um, in math and I did one in science. So, so check it out. So a lot of cool things. They're really uh, improving Google Class, Google Classroom quite a bit. So hopefully uh, this video helped you out. Have a great school year.